In this step, we're going to make it where you can click on the cards and flip them over to see what their value is. I haven't added anything new in the variables. We still have just create cards and assign values being called from our public function card class. In private function, create cards, we've added two new lines. We've added my cards i equals underscore card. This adds the card to our array my cards. Then we're going to have my cards i dot button mode equal true, so you get the pointing hand over each card so that you know that you can click on it. It would work without that, but it's more user friendly. Then at the end of that function, we have we're adding event listeners of a click event to each of the cards in my cards, and we're calling a function for each one. Now it's easiest to create this line than copy and paste and change the values. So each card has its own function. We'll go look at one of those functions. We have function cards1. It's getting a mouse event of the mouse click and it's not returning anything. We create a variable and it's the same variable in each function because it's local. So when we close the function, it doesn't exist anymore. So we're getting send me, which is a number type, and it's equal to card placement of the card that we're currently on. We're going to have my frame equal to get frame send me that variable and then we're going to take that card in the position we're at and we're going to have it stop on the frame we've selected so this is a new function that I've written get frame we're going to send it the send me variable and here's the get frame function this is using a switch case statement which is like a nested if statement it's we're sending it send me but here we're locally calling it n so for the variable frame, we, which we assign to a number type, we're switching n, that's send me, and we're assigning as a variable here of the number type. In case 1, it's frame equals 2, because our first frame is the back of the card. If it's case 2, it's frame 3. If it's case 3, it's frame 4. If it's case 4, it's frame 5. Since we're pairing them up, even though I have eight frames in the movie clip, that's for you to extend this to 16 cards to finish the assignment. I'm doing the first eight cards. So in case five, it's going to become equal to frame two again. That way, with the member game, you have to match two cards, so these would match. Case six, case seven, case eight, they're all assigned. And with a switch case statement, you have to have a break so that you leave the logic. We're actually returning a value here which is frame which is a number type and you see we're setting frame number equal to five four three two etc so this is where it declares that we're returning a number type so it gets it back in whichever function called it my cards to go to and stop my frame whatever is returned is the frame that it's going to let's try it so if I click on each one of these it gets the pointing hand and it turns over the cards and you'll see that each card shows up twice so that we will be able to match them in the next step for the memory game to see if we can remember and make it win. So get this step completed and then go on to the next one.